when we have the different weights assigned for each of these courses so we get x into w wx so we get different values here i have to find out the d values now how do i find the d values x minus a now what is x here 1 so 1 minus 5 equals minus 4 see whatever is the difference between the class interval the same difference we will be finding in the midpoint also Hello everyone, I am Purnima, a faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. I welcome you all to this session. In this unit 2 of session 2, we will be having a discussion on weighted arithmetic mean. Now, here, what do we mean by weighted arithmetic mean? See, one of the limitations of simple arithmetic mean is, it the mean will also increase or decrease by the same constant, whereas, the importance of item in the distribution is not the same. See, when we are calculating the mean, see, it does not take into consideration the importance of each of the values in the given data. So, whatever the values are given, it will just ink, the mean will just increase or decrease by the value of the items, but then it does not give any importance to the weights. So, where the importance of items varies, it is essential to allocate weights to the items. According to the relative importance of the items, the weightage applied may vary in different cases. Thus, weightage is a number standing for the relative importance of the items. Weighted average can be defined as an average whose components are multiplied by certain values and aggregate of products are divided by the total of the weights. Now, when we have this weights, so, based on the importance of the values, we just assign weights to the values and when we calculate the mean by multiplying the values with the weights, we get the weighted mean. So, with the help of weighted mean, we will be able to assess what is more important. So, in the simple arithmetic mean, there is no importance given to any of the values Whereas, in the weighted mean, we give importance in the form of weights. Now, let us see one illustration here. Comment on the performance of students of three universities given below using simple and weighted average. So, we have the various universities here. The courses of study, MA, MCOM, M BBA, BA, BCOM, BSc, MSc, percentage of passes, the number of students, here also Calcutta and Madras. Then, see, when we compute the simple average, what happens is, we just take into consideration only the total of the X values. So, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras. If you can see the total here, the total is same for all the three and the mean becomes the same for all the three. So, the mean we are getting is 72. So, 72 percent of the students pass in all the three universities. But when we have the weights assigned, see for MA the weight is 3, for MCOM 4, BA 5, BCOM 2, BSc, MSc. Similarly, here also we have the different ways assigned for each of these courses. So, when we have the different weights assigned for each of these courses, so we get x into w, wx. So, we get different values here. So, if you can see here for Bombay, the total of xw is 1451. For Calcutta, it is 1977. And for Madras is 1513. Now, if you calculate the weighted mean for all the three universities, for Bombay it is 72.55 and Kolkata it is 70.60 and Madras is 72.05. Whereas, when we calculated the simple arithmetic mean, we were getting the same mean for all the universities. So, 72 was the simple mean for all the three universities. So, this one we could not differentiate, but now we can see that there is more number of passes in Bombay University because it is giving a pass result of 72.55. So, this is the highest percentage of passes. Second comes Madras, 
third comes kolkata so in this way we if with the help of the weights we will be able to assess the performance of each of the universities so we write a conclusion that bombay is the best university because the weighted mean is greater than the other two universities now going to the next slide let us have one more illustration here this is for the discrete series so discrete series means values along with the frequency so the formula is so mean equals sigma fx divided by n so here x bar denotes the arithmetic mean sigma fx it is the sum of the products and n is the number of items so calculate mean from the following data so we are given the values 10 values are given and also the frequency is given so if we have to calculate this so we again have to write this calculation of mean then i have to write f into x fx so 1 into 21 is 21 2 into 30 is 60 3 into 28 is 84 160 130 204 280 5 so 570 so the total of sigma fx is 1716 where the total of frequency is 300 so this is one way so you can always calculate the mean in this way so mean will be sigma fx divided by n that is 1716 divided by 300 so the answer will be 5.72 this will be the mean of this problem so we have two methods here the second method is a plus or minus sigma fd by n so in this the x bar is the mean a is the assumed mean and we have the sum of the total deviation n and n is the total frequency now see the same problem we are doing with the help of the shortcut method so with the help of assumed mean now let us assume a equals 5 so 5 tends to be the middle most value here so i take the assumed value as 5 now i have to find out the d values now how do i find the d values x minus a now what is x here 1 So one minus five equals minus four. So this is what I got here. Then two minus five equals minus three. Yes. Then three minus five equals minus two. Then four minus five equals minus one. Yes. Next five minus five is zero. One, two, three, four, five. So in this way, I got the d values. Now, what will be the next step? F into d. So whatever is the value here, twenty one into minus four is minus eighty four. Thirty into minus three is ninety. Twenty eight into two is fifty six. Minus forty zero. Thirty four eighty. So we get all these values. So when we add up all these values, I get the answer as plus two hundred and sixteen. and the value of n equals 300 now in this see i am substituting the values here so a equals 5 sigma fd is plus 216 n equals 300 so when i simplify this i get the answer 5 plus 0.72 so this is the same as the previous illustration so in this way we can understand that the whether you do it by the assumed mean method or by the direct method the answer you get is the same now next is the continuous series so in the continuous frequency distribution the value of each individual frequency distribution is unknown so we don't know the values so in this again we have the mean equals sigma fm divided by n from the following find out the mean profits now if you can observe here the data given it is in the form of a class interval so the values fall uh, the values here they are between 100 and 200 200 and 300 300 to 400 
So up to 700 to 800 and they have also given us the number of shops. So this denotes the frequency. So this is the problem given. So we'll just work out the problem here. So in this if we are given the uh, data in the form of a class interval, then we have to find out the midpoint. So, how do we find the midpoint? So, 100 plus 200 divided by 2, that is 300 divided by 2, that is 150. So, this is the midpoint. Then, what is the midpoint of 200 to 300? 250, 350. See, whatever is the difference between the class interval, the same difference we will be finding in the midpoint also. Then, next we have the number of shops, that is the frequency. It, is, it will be given in the problem. So, the next step will be multiply F into M. So, 10 into 150, 1500, 4500. So, we add all these values, we are getting the total as 72,900. So, mean equals sigma fm by n. So, 72,900 divided by 150, the answer is 486. So, the average profits of these shops is 486. Next. The, for this, uh, we have this shortcut method for this uh, continuous series also. So, the same method we can follow. So, A plus or minus sigma Fd by N, where A is the assumed mean, sigma Fd is the sum of the total deviation, N is the number of items. So, here the same problem we have with the step deviation method. So, in this so, I have the midpoint, I already have the midpoint, now I write the deviations for this. So, I assume 450, a assumed mean is 450. So, assumed mean is 450, so 150 minus 450, it is minus 300, minus 200, minus 100, then 450 minus 450 is 0, 100, 200, 300. Then we have the D, F, F values. So now you just multiply the F into D. So you get the total as 5400. Substitute the values here. So mean equals 450 plus 5400 divided by 150. So 450 plus 36, 486. Therefore, the average profit is 486. Next, the step deviation method. The shortcut method discussed above is further simplified or calculations are reduced to a great extent by adopting the step deviation method. So, after finding out the deviation from the assumed mean, if possible, divided by common factor, scaling down the deviation by a step, will reduce the calculation to a minimum. In such a case, frequencies will be multiplied by step deviations and not by the deviations. So, the decrease meant arrived by scaling down is counterbalanced by multiplying the average mean, the whole steps in brief. So, in the step deviation method, so when we have very large numbers, so we can always reduce the value of the deviations. So, if you are having the deviations as 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, then you can just uh, divide the entire values by 100 and then we can just set it off by multiplying the entire value into that 100. So, in this way, we can be able to find the arithmetic mean. So, this will be the sum of deviations. Sigma FDI is sum of the deviations and N is the number of items. C is the common factor. Now, we have uh, the same problem here. The same problem here, I am having the midpoint here and F here. Now, what did I do in the previous problem? So, I had just taken the D and directly I had multiplied F into D. But here, I am taking this D dash. Now, what is this D dash? Since all the values are divisible by 100, so I, I just divide all the values by 100 here. So, 300 divided by 100 is minus 3. 
minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So in this way, I am just simplifying all the values here as a result of which my FD dash also will be very easy to calculate. I will not have huge values to just multiply. So it will be easy for my calculations. Now if you can see here, the sigma FDI, so this is equal to 54. Now x is the, x bar is the mean, a is the assumed mean, FDI is the sum of the deviation number of items. So assumed mean is again 450 plus 54 by 150 into 100. So when I simplify this, so 54 divided by 150, I am getting 0 0.36 into 100. So 450 plus 36 is 486. Therefore, the average profit is 486. So this average profit we have calculated by three methods. That is the direct method, then we have the deviation method and the step deviation method. Whatever method we calculate, the average profit is always 486. So with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.